Let's make a VR game together. And in this new episode, we are going to add a ladder to climb to the control room and then be able to move the spaceship by grabbing a wheel and a lever. As always, feel free to subscribe down below for the next episode about adding the story and the audio of our game. And if you'd like to support my work and get access to the Result Unity project, I will leave in the description my Patreon. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so for our next amazing interaction, what you want to do is to be able to control the spaceship. But first, we need to go to the control room, which is over there. And as you can see, there is a big problem is that it's on another level. But worry no more because we are going to make our own ladder to be able to reach this point. Now for the ladder, we need to make, of course, the climbing system. Now, I've previously made a video about how to climb in VR, which is a bit old right now. But what is pretty cool is that the XR Interaction Toolkit has updated their SDK with a new climbing system. That's right. So, for example, if we go to Samples, XR Interaction Toolkit, Starter Asset, Prefab, there is, as you can see, a climb folder that we can open with a climbing wall and a ladder. Amazing, right? So what we can do is simply drag here this ladder right there. Let's move it to the side. And actually, this ladder is going a bit too high right now. So an easy fix is to simply put it down. Now, in my case, the player will never go outside to see here uh, the ladder going outside of the ship. So this is not a problem. So. How does this ladder works? As you can see, we have a left side right there, which basically does nothing, and a right side, which, like the left side, is doing nothing. But the important part are here, these handles. Now, as you can see, these handles have a climb interactable, which is in the same way as the teleportation that we made earlier, is working kind of a teleportation area, but for the climbing. Next, as you can see, there is also a top handle, which is basically two bar with another climb interactable. But the question is, why is there two types of climb interactable? Now, as you can see, this is because if we go to the setting override, the two climbable only differs here with the climb setting override. With the handles, you can basically only go up but with the top handles, you will be able to go up, but also move on the forward axis. And the purpose of basically these top handles is to be able to kind of place yourself more easily on this platform right there, which was not the case. So right now, we have with this ladder everything already set up for us. Now you can, of course, use the climb interactable on any game object with a collider to be able to climb on it. And the last thing that we need is to go on the XR origin and click on add component and search for climb provider. Then we can basically drag the locomotion system over there in the system and it's done. With it, everything is set up to be able to use this ladder and climb on top of it to reach here the control room. Now let's find out how this works by clicking on play. Okay, here you go. Let's try to move and we can open the door and here is the beautiful ladder. And as you can see, if I approach my hands, it changed the color of the ladder using the affordance system, which was the same as for the button, if you remember. And now if I press on the grip button, as you can see, I can move up or down. And when I release, I'm able to jump out of the ladder. Okay, and as you can see, if I grab one handle at a time, I'm able to climb on top of the ladder. And now, with the top handles, I can just move myself up outside of the ladder. Because, as you remember, with the top of the ladder, I can not only move up, but also forward. And then, as you can see, I successfully managed to reach the control room this way. Awesome! Okay, but now that we have managed to go inside the control room and that we can do so by climbing the ladder, we want to be able to control the spaceship here on this desk. Now, the first thing that I want to fix is that I think that this window is a bit too much opaque. So I'm going to select it, go to Windows here on the material, and for the blending mode, set it to Alpha. There you go. We can maybe click on the color and kind of reduce the alpha value here to be able to see a bit better. And like this, everything should work great. 
Now to control the spaceship, I'm going to add two things, a lever and a wheel. Now again, these two things used to be some complicated setup to do on your project, but lucky for us, again, the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit has already set up an awesome wheel and an awesome lever in their sample project. Which is really odd to me is that it is not by default inside the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit package that we install here. So as you can see, if we go to the prefab and to the UI 3D, we cannot see the wheel, neither the lever here. So to save us some time, I've already added them inside the let's make a VR game folder that you should have installed in the first episode of this series. So if we go to let's make a VR game, then to UI 3D examples, then to UI 3D prefab, you should see all of them here. So we have this wheel, a slider, a push button, a lever, a joystick, a grip button, and a dial. Now, anyway, what we need in my case is a wheel, so I'm simply going to drag it over there like this, and a lever that I can drag on the side like this. Now, for the wheel, I think that we can scale it up a little bit and rotate it this way. Beautiful. For the lever, we can do the same. Beautiful, and it already looks good. Now, by default, the value of the lever is enabled, but in my case, I want the lever to be off at start, so let's disable it. And as you can see, it has correctly placed the lever on the other side, so let's maybe rotate it 180 degrees to retrieve its original position. Beautiful. Now, let's see how this works by clicking on play. Now, as you can see, I'm already in front of the wheel and the lever, and as you can see, they works really, really great. Now, these two elements works by simply overriding the XR grab interactable, but restricting their movement around a certain axis. But now, using this wheel and this lever, the question is, how can we control the spaceship? And as you can see, we have a certain value here, which is already set at 0.5 by default. And that goes from 0 to 1. And for the lever, as you saw earlier, we have here the value that can change its rotation as well. Now, using these two values, so the rotation value on the wheel and the on-off value on the lever is not complicated to do. What is a bit weird is that if we want to control the spaceship, it will mean that we need to move everything to a certain direction, which is something we don't want, of course, because it will create all sorts of problems, like collision, but also on the optimization, which we will talk about later in this series. But I have another trick up my sleeve to fix this, because instead of moving the spaceship in itself, what if we move the outside environment to fake to the player that we are actually moving? And this is what we are going to make. So if we go to our let's make a VR game prefab, we have here our space waste small, and I'm going to place some outside of our environment, just in front of the control room. We can press on R and scale it up a little bit like this. There you go. Now, as you can see, I've added a bunch of space with both meteor outside of our environment. And my goal is for the player to navigate its way through them and to reach a certain point. Now, I found out that maybe a good idea would be to really use the awesome vortex effect that we've made. So what I'm going to do is duplicate it. Oh, <laughs> this is getting weird here. But anyway, let's drag it outside of the interactable next to the space way small. And let's place it over there. Beautiful. We can rotate it 90 degrees to make it face our spaceship. And my goal is to make it just in front of here, the spaceship, and to scale it up like so. Beautiful. There you go. Now, this way, we've already managed to set up the outside world for our amazing VR environment. And so, in my case, the goal for the player will be to reach this big vortex in time and not touch any of the asteroids. And it will be able to navigate using the wheel and the lever that we added earlier. Now, like I mentioned earlier, instead of moving the whole environment, the only thing that we can do is move here all of the outside world to make it feel like the player is moving. So for this, let's right click, create empty, call this one space outside and recenter its position. 
and let's drag all of our outside element under the space outside so that they are only controlled by one object. Now, to be able to control this space outside using the two values from our wheel and from our lover, let's create a new component that I'm going to call space outside controller. Now, in this script, we are going to need a reference to our wheel and to our lover that we can get with using unity engine.xr.content.interaction. Now, at the top, we can add a public xr lover called lover and a public xr knob called knob. Beautiful. Then I'm going to add two floats, a public float for the forward speed, which will be called forward speed, <laughs> and a public float for the side speed called side speed. Amazing. And now in the update function, let's use these two values with the lever and the knob for the movement on the forward axis. What we can do is forward velocity and set it to the forward speed. But we only want the forward speed to apply if the lever is on. So what we can do is actually multiply by lever dot value interrogation one double point zero. Now, basically, if you don't know already, this is like asking a question. Is the lever dot value on? If it's the case, we will set this to one. If it's not the case, we'll set it to zero. So basically, when the lever dot value is false, this will just set all of the thing to zero. Otherwise, it will set it to the forward speed. Now let's do the same for the side velocity. We can do so by side velocity multiply by the same thing. So lever dot value one or zero. Uh, side speed, sorry. But in the case of the side velocity, we also want to take into consideration the rotation of the wheel. Now, if you remember, if we go to our wheel right there, we add the value that went from zero to one. Zero meaning left, one meaning right. But multiply by mathf.lerp minus one, one, and then knob.value. Beautiful. Now, by adding the matherf.lerp, this means that when the knob value is set to zero, it will return the value minus one. When the knob value is set to one, it will return one. And when the knob value is in the middle, which is 0 0.5, it will return the middle of minus one and one, which is zero. So this will give us a correct value that goes from left to right and that we can use to move our space outside by creating a vector three called velocity that we can set with new vector three side velocity zero forward velocity. And then let's finally do transform dot position plus equals to velocity multiply by time dot delta time to apply correctly the velocity that we made. And so with these beautiful settings, what we made is move the space outside in this direction when the lever is on. And when the wheel is on the left side, we will move everything to the left and on the right side, everything to the right, make it feel like the player is actually controlling the spaceship. Now, anyway, we have two things to set up here, the lever and the knob. So let's set it here by clicking here on lever and then knob by clicking here on a wheel. Now for the forward speed, let's maybe set it to three meters per second and for the side speed to one meter per second. And now let's find out if this works by clicking on play. Okay, and here you go, guys. As you can see, I'm in front of the control room. Let's see if I enable this lever, if we can move forward, and if we turn the wheel, if we can go left or right. So here you go. And it seems to work. As you can see, I can move left or right, and I can even maybe stop the spaceship. Now, this effect is working great. I guess that it's really hard to see that it's not the spaceship that is moving, but all of the outside. Now, I really like this effect and I hope that it will give you plenty of ID for your VR game as well. And this sums up the awesome interaction that we wanted to make here with the climbing and with the control of the spaceship with these two elements. And there you go, guys. This spaceship control might be one of the coolest thing in this project. It turned out very well, but wait till you see the next episode where we are going to link our interaction together by adding a story to our game. So make sure to subscribe. And if you'd like to support my work and get access to the Result Unity project, I will leave my Patreon in the description below. Thank you for watching and see you very soon. Bye bye.